Candle pin bowling is a New England tradition, and a sport enjoyed by both girls and boys of all ages. Across six annual tournaments, we bring together the game's finest young talent in a celebration of bright futures, big scores, and bigger smiles. We are proud to introduce the new generation of bowling with Season 10 of Candle Pin for Kids. To see old episodes and for more information, go to www.cp4k.com. Hello again from Park Place Lane, Swinham, New Hampshire, Candle Pin for Kids, Division 3, last chance to qualify for Nesson. Alongside Dan Gauthier, I'm Rob Taylor. We've been saying how the big guns have uh, not been putting up quite the highest scores we've expected this year. I think today's the day that's going to change. Well, we have four of the best in the game here. I look down at who's bowling in this match. There's no question. Everyone in this match is capable. Our boys capable of hitting a 400. Our ladies capable of hitting a 400. Shannon put up 395 today. All-time record for the show. So they're capable. The only thing standing in their way are the 11 and unders. Who <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the pressure of beating those guys. We have the two Division Three champions in this match. We have the international tournament champion, and we have a kid who moved up from Division Two. So let's meet all four of them. This $1,000 ICBA scholarship winner is back for another shot at Nesson and is coming off the highest female qualifying score in show history. Her partner is half the duo from last year's Division Three championship tandem and is renowned for the strike heard around the world. It's Shannon Scribner and Alex Hazard. Challenging them the other half from that championship tandem, the most decorated girl in youth bowling history who tossed the highest single of Candlepin for Kids last season is joined by an upstart 14-year-old who tossed a 160 game to qualify in the upper division. It's Kylie Josefiak and Michael Facebook Pelchek. The big guns on Candlepin for Kids, Shannon Scribner, looking to avenge her loss in the first Division Three match of the season. She's going up against Kylie Josefiak, who won it with Shannon's partner, Alex Ooh. Hazard, last season. No, I'm not sure on Kylie's leave where she really wants to play that. I think if you're either full on the two or if you can somehow catch the three and have the wood spin back and take the two, I'd probably play the four. But I think if you, I don't think the wood's quite far enough right to carry the three if you play the two, but we're going to find out. Shannon just off. Kylie's planted over there. Does carry the three, does not carry the two. And so now they both look for outs. Shannon Scribner in her match this season tossed a 118 on our show, which unfortunately was not enough. She and Josh Lowell lost by six to Sonia Richard and Jamie Crush Schmidt. And that score that Sonia and Jamie threw is our target score, 227. Both was it Shannon? Defeated. Was it Shannon or Sonya? Where you were telling me once you figured out their average all time for the show, and it was something like one nineteen. That was Sonya, actually. Although Jake Shannon has been on the show twice, I believe she tossed a one oh nine her first time last year, and then a one eighteen. So she's solid in the one teens as well. She was right there among your predictions. And there's a hammer for Shannon Scribner. She's always been among the girls you predicted to be in the top two or three every year, right? This year especially, she took the Portsmouth tournament, and her ball was almost designed for Park Place, as Kylie gets no luck at all trying to throw that one off the seven. Yeah, a couple of really nice boxes for Kylie, nothing to show for it. Shannon, you know, what, what do you need to say? She just threw a hammer. Shannon Don't ball much better than that. Shannon threw her high triple today with a 395, which we believe is the highest yeah, triple ever thrown by that's gotta be the record for a girl, girl at Candleton for Kids. Just she missing a 400. Too. Opened with a 142, followed it up with a 135. Her ball's got a lot of velocity on it, especially for the girls' side. And it works well for her. Kylie, not as much velocity, but she gets the leave there, looking at just the four. Distracting wood in front there. Though. Yeah, and the wood is, the cap of the wood is like halfway across the front of her pin. So you really got to decide do I go around and it or play it? I think she's going to try to play it. The wood behind it might bounce, but it will not. And there's the danger, you know, if you catch the cap and your ball doesn't get by clean, you just don't make the shot. Might have been better off just kind of aiming a little more in the middle of the wood. And at least give it a shot. But yeah. If Especially there was the way no the wood, wood goes all over it. The way the wood goes here, I, I would have gone more toward the middle. Wood has a way of sliding a little, slide toward the pin. Shannon on the other side, picking up the spare. She threw three marks in her first four boxes in her first match this season. And it was actually boxes two, three, and four that she did it to. She seems to get hot early. Doesn't waste any time. Tough three, Phil. Kylie off the head pin, but maybe getting a better leave. Go get it, Kylie. Kylie is the representative of Fun Time Lanes in Holyoke. Shannon of Big 20 in Scarborough, Maine. 
Shannon was with a crew of about a handful today as she picks up another mark and Kylie again, <laughs> unable to catch that seven. It's hard, to, you know, at the same time, I want to congratulate Shannon for throwing such a great ball. And I don't want to be overshadowing Kylie, who seems to be throwing an equal ball, just not carrying the last pin every box. It's a shame because you know we could be looking at a, you know, 50 to 50 match right. here in the fourth. But, but it's the way the game goes, and if you're Shannon, you're just going to keep filling and build up that lead because anything can change very fast. Especially with these two fireballers yeah. we have coming after him. Michael Pelchat and Alex Hazard can put up big scores in a flash. And as you know, Michael's playing with house money here. He's already in our Tournament of Champions in the middle age group. So Kylie now again. That seven yeah. pin's going to be the challenge. She's Another had trouble getting lead. it so far. And Shannon, you can almost feel her ball just weaving into that one-two pocket and giving this one another run. Veers off. Kylie catches the seven, but a little full. So you know, on the object pin, like you said, just a little bit too much of it. Nothing to hang her hat about this half. That is the strength that she has in general. It's just good pinning. You can weather a storm and then put her own marks together later. So both looking for outs. Shannon cleans up nine. Kylie gets ten. So a strong 65 half for Shannon Scribner. Kylie Josefiak had no breaks as she goes into the half at 48. And so now it's Michael Pelchad and Alex Hazard's turn to take the lanes. Michael Pelchad, as we mentioned, won earlier this year. Again with Renee Whitelaw. He only tossed a 97 in that one. I think he'd like a little higher here. He's done us the service on his information sheet of giving us an artistic rendition of himself on a date. He looks very dapper in the picture. It's the monocle I'm most impressed by. The he monocle. leaves just the five pin. The monocle and the pinky up. <laughs> Michael Pelchot, certainly one of the characters on Candle Pin for Kids. Pocket vest. He's are just off that head pin. He can start off with a mark here. <laughs> He's had a big smile on his face so after that one. A little bit of a dodged a bullet look on that face. Yeah, he had a big grimace on his face. I was saying, hey, he committed to the wood and he played it and he got it. But by the look on his face when he turned around, he wasn't I'm committed. not so sure that's where he wanted it. So a big swing there. Hazard just a little off to the right, but he's only able to get five that box. So Pelchat yeah. can get a good 10, 12 of them back in this one fell swoop here. When you can gain over half the deficit back in one box, you're doing great. Hazard staring at the orange pin, goes a little right. Pelchat, tough three fill. Hazard, of course, made a name for himself in our Tournament of Champions last year when in the semifinals, he needed an eight or better fill in the last box of the match, and he went through a hammer with the ball much like that one in the pocket. He and Kylie went on to win the Tournament of Champions with the highest score of the year. I believe it was 247 in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these kids capable of putting up big scores. Michael Pelchat lists his favorite pro bowler as himself four years from now. And he did that last time, too. That's uh, <laughs> impressive. <laughs> He also has an I'm single ladies at the bottom with a call me. Hobbies. So as you mentioned, he's a bit of a, he's a character. Michael Hobbies Pelchat. include breaking into playgrounds with no fences. <laughs> <laughs> and leaving Come nine on. pin drops, he's got another one with again some wood to play. That's true, he's going to have to change his hobby. The one on the furthest right looks like the one you oh, want. Oh yeah, yeah. With a chance of stealing it if he hits the one in the middle. Ideally low on the one on the right. And what you didn't want to do. break for Mike. That's why I said you kind of wanted to be low on that right one. You didn't want to give yourself a chance of hitting that front one and not getting it. Hazard was trying to steal his. You thought there was a chance that the wood could spin back from the two pin. It did not. And so both bowlers looking to get their legs under him a little bit in this one. Both a little bit off. Mike seems to be developing a little bit of a following in the crowd here. I can hear Cookie Richards rooting for him every box. They're calling him Facebook, and I'm glad that that <laughs> caught on. <laughs> Michael is known for getting hundreds of likes on his Facebook posts. If only Candlepin for Kids could do the same. If we could get him in two age groups, though, that could get us Nielsen ratings on its own. I'm worried that I may make the viewers start to think that we don't have talent galore in the older age group, seeing a lot of the middle kids come up, but that surprised me as much as anybody. Normally, this is full of talent in the 15 to 18s. There, Michael just had a career day. He tossed his high yeah. single with a 160 as both bowlers 
If there's one thing you can be okay with on that one is you didn't lose anything on either side. Pelshad only losing a pin with the four box. Pelshad's a big kid too. She's like what, almost almost six feet tall probably? Yep. So, both of these guys actually sizable. Hazard's been really having trouble veering off to the right. Pelchat dropping another nine pin drop. Now, and, uh, really go for the that wood tempting? <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it doesn't look that good anymore. At the beginning, it had some possibilities. Cause I mean, some if he hits the, the one in the uh, middle, it'll probably uh, bounce <laughs> over. But <laughs> you wanna, I wanted to see if he would turn around and look at anybody, but oh, he went Hazard right for the pin. Just, just left. What he should have done. Just missed it. As Father was saying, even in his first game that he didn't throw a 160, the one just before the 160, he was still dropping nines every first ball. He just wasn't making them all. And oftentimes, that's the difference between your monster score and a regular game. Both of our gentlemen are going to look to step it up in their second half. Also looking to step it up is Liam Fitzgerald Ledger looking to smoke the shoe. We'll see if he can do it after the break. Hi, I'm Dan Gothier. Welcome back to Candlepin for Kids. My favorite segment, Smoke the Shoe. I'm here with Liam Fitzgerald. What's your last name? Ledger. Ledger. Like he, you related to uh, Heath? Well, kind of something like that. <laughs> I bet you bowl better than him though, right? Yeah. Especially right now. Yeah. Uh, you said you don't need any practice. You're good to go, right? Yeah. You know how this works? $20 if you throw a strike. You ready for it? Yeah, I am. All right. And uh, I do remember you had one of my most favorite interviews very recently where you said uh, you watched yourself on TV and what did you think of yourself? I think I look handsome. <laughs> I, I doubt anybody in the audience is going to disagree. Hopefully you can look handsome while throwing a strike. Good luck. And I am joined with a very special guest, Dave Cookie Richards, a man no stranger to the TV lights. How you doing, Dave? How are you liking this one? I'm doing well. Uh, I was watching Liam bowl earlier, and he throws not too bad of a ball. And he comes so. out with a strong strategy, cutting the shoe off right off the gates. Liam was very excited for this one as shoe drops in early eight. Oh, look at this one, look at this one. Oh, should have had it. So now Liam's throwing some good balls. Liam comes to every Candlepin for Kids event. And he has cut the shoe yeah. off again. It, it looks like a Canadian move in my eyes. <laughs> Trying to intimidate. Oh. Shoe picks up the spare, so no dice for Liam, but a great try. Awesome what have you thought try. of our kids today, Cookie? I think they're awesome. I was here all day for the qualifying, and uh, they're just super bowlers. It's just unbelievable to watch. It, you guys are doing a great job with this, and I hope it continues. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Join us after the break. Thank you. looking to chip into an 11 pin deficit. She's going up against the powerhouse of Shannon Scribner, Kylie, picking up right where she left off. But that one looks pretty set, in my opinion. Shannon's looks more set, though, with the hammer right out of the gates. And I think if Kylie hits it, she's got it, right? Let's see where she plays it. Oh, boy. Oh, yo, I feel bad. I mean, where she hit it, I thought the pin that fell was the one she had to worry about more. And I mean, I see what she was trying to do. Again, just no luck. She does pick up the 10. I believe she has five out of six head pin hits already at this she point. She does, and with four boxes left, you know things are going to come around for her. You just have to hope there's enough room left in the score sheet. Another hand, and, and you to have to hope that uh, Shannon doesn't keep throwing hammers. Shannon, again, is the Portsmouth International Tournament champion, which she won a $1,000 scholarship for as Kylie looks at another difficult split. She, you know, she's on the head pin, but she's a whisker full, and this is what happens, really. A lot of eights and sevens, but splits. Her ball might bounce over with the double wood. We'll see. Doesn't oh, catch that every, back wood. Everything went to the left and fell off the deck, you know, inches from the wood behind the seven pin. Shannon looking to have a better second ball than the first here. Get a big fill. She gets the key eight. She's had good second balls this whole match. Oh, ball, so Kylie is tanning up a storm right now. And you can't help but think, at least half of those could have been spares. Oh, she only left two pins standing so far in seven boxes. Nice 10 by Scribner. It's the difference 19, I believe. It's, uh, it's good pinning that has kept it within 19. Very true. Yeah. Kylie off the head pin this time. Looking Maybe. for a little kickback. It's not by any means an easy lead, but it's probably easier than our last one. Scribner getting some action on that four pin. And Kylie just misses that pocket and only punches one. It's going to be a tough box to get out of with a nine or a ten. 
Scribner with a chance to really assert herself. Clip ball here. On it and picks it up. No wood necessary either for Scribner. Kylie gets a fantastic 10. Trying to just hang on here. She's heading for a very high game without a mark. <laughs> Absolutely. Scribner also has only left two pins standing. So we're seeing some great bowling from both of our ladies. And you think the score could even be higher, especially for Kylie. On that head pin, this is a little nicer for her. What makes it difficult is the pressure mounts so much when you finally see a spare leave and a pin you got to yeah, hit. Tell me about it. It's easy to get a little shaky. We'll see if Kylie can overcome it. She's all over it, and you could almost see that coming. And she, I, you know, I think she knew it was going to happen. She turned around, just smiling, laughing, saying, kind of knew it was happening. Scribbing her right in there on that second ball, and you're right. Her second ball has been right where you want it. Kylie with another 10. Kylie and I bowl in a league on uh, Wednesday night in Ware, and that league keeps track of their records for 30 or 40 years. And up until two weeks ago, their all-time record for a string with no marks was only 97. Kylie has a chance to beat it. Yeah. And I'm taking a look at how many object pins Kylie has hit in this game. She's only missed three. She's only missed three in, out of 27. So I think that's 24 object pins she's hit, maybe? Oh! Another object and... This one. I dare say she can make this one. <laughs> and, you know, you look at the match. This season over. That 19 is not with a, a chance to chip back. Get in Kylie's single on it. Ice in her veins, picks up the spare. <laughs> Crowd gives her a bit of a fun cheer there. One of the loudest cheers you'll ever hear for one mark. She appreciates it. Give She's Kylie laughing. credit for playing along with it, too. It's frustrating you when know, you only have one string. and For the dominance that the Scrivener has had, five marks to one, if Kylie fills this with a big fill, she'd get it down to single digits. Especially looking for an out here. Scrivener gets eight, so... Seventeen. Eight or nine. Eight or nine gets into one mark game. This is where she's going to leave the 7-10 and be happy with it. She'll get 6. So she knocks it down to what, 12? 104 with one mark. Very nicely bold game. And Scribner with a 121. And again, she threw a 118 earlier in the season. So Scribner averaging about a 120 on our show. Ladies didn't let us down at all in that match. That was some fine bowling by both ladies in this match. And I think now we're going to see the gentleman step it up. Pelchat right on that head pin. His fourth nine pin drop. I mean, drop he's been missing nine string. drop. The problem is that in this particular game, he hasn't been making a lot. He was earlier. And the more you see, the tougher they get. Oh, they especially do. They when do. Because he's some. thinking about the ones he missed. That's what happens. And he's thinking about that. You know that what's too. happening. He's rushing, he's thinking about and it. But you know, you try different strategies, you try. If you keep dropping quick. nines, you can chop into the lead that way. Not there only goes. that, but pinning right now, Hazer. Chat. Looking for a big fill. All right, back. He did have to deal with an unfortunate technical difficulty, but we're back now. Michael did not get the count he wanted on that fill, but that leave He's is got a doable. great shot at this one. Just off. Just on, Makes sure yeah, that would be very helpful. In there. Gives a frustrated clap after that one. Hazer goes straight through, and he's having trouble getting anything going too. Nice nine by Mike. I gotta tell you, like if it's me, sometimes I feel better when that shot doesn't go when you hit on the third ball. It's a little, you know, you missed it the second ball. You put it where you want in the third ball. If a pin stays up, it's, it's like, the only yeah. time you don't get mad at it. You're like, okay, yeah. it wouldn't have gone right, anyway. Yeah, Four pin match, Four two pin boxes to go. You have to think Hazard's gonna break out of it though. Yeah. Elchad's got a chance. Buries one. 
Stay uh, in uh -oh. there. Stay in there. Just starting to say, you're also going to think he's going to throw a strike sooner or later. Hazard oh, falling Hazard. up what in the show one. for it. Kind of reminds you of God in the way he got bad leaves on the left lane. Peltat has a chance to bounce it over. Goes for that. Interesting play. It's a viable play. I think you know you'd have to be less full on the cap. Hazard trying as well. I might have tried the wood on the right on that one and seen if you could bounce it over. Might not have been there anyway. So again, pinning important. It's going to be going down to our last box. That one gets away. So two pins now, the difference. <laughs> See, it's just like our last match. Came down to one or two pins in the last box. This one's two pins in the last box. And you know Hazert's in a bit of a nightmare here. An extremely uncharacteristic game for him. But now it's all about one box. And Michael Peltow with a tough shot. Right now, though, pinning so important. You never know. Seven is very I mean, possible. The last thing you want to do if you're uh, Hazert is punch a half Wister or something. Or here. spread eagle. Another Not tough quite. split. <laughs> Palchat just right, off. Here go, here go. Yeah, if you're Hazer, you can you can take a lot the game of pressure three. off yourself here by just getting three pins. Oh, Only that's it's about one. the worst thing you could so do. Now if Mike can make pin. this, he'll have a shot. No. And he won't. So Alex Hazer is going to sneak away with this one with Shannon Scribner. Tell you, Mike could have put a lot of pressure on there just by getting two or three pins in that. And. Hazard seals the deal with two. So Shannon Scribner and Alex Hazard are advancing to our Tournament of Champions. Hilo Jacks after the break. Hilo Jack time. Kylie Josephiak going to make a shot. And as you were saying, man, she's got pretty good odds of hitting the headband. No. Yeah. Take it back. Yeah. I, j I got jinxed. 80% before that ball. So she said. Kylie Josephiak has her hobby. 75. Her hobby is listed as iPhone games and shopping. And she's... That looked, no problem! That looked exactly like what she was doing in the match. The head pin bouncing right over that 7 Yeah. I feel safe about this $5, though. So. Trying to cut it. Not quite. <laughs> Shannon Scribner's turn. Now with her, you'd have to think she's going to have to be on the right side of the head pin. So yeah, big happen. sweeping ball is almost the kind of ball you want. Not too overpowering, sweeping. If she's on the left side, odds are lower. Although at Parker Place, you never slide know. Here, right? she exactly. can get some Shannon's hidden talent is that she's good with numbers. She's Isn't good. that in a movie? What movie is that in? Numbers. Like, I'm good with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was in uh, Rain James Man. Bond. Rain Man too, of course. So Shannon, gonna look to make the shot. Sesame Street too, the count. That's Shannon the Count Scribner. <laughs> she's she, got a little laugh. There. She has her nickname, let's say Scrib. Scribs. Scrib. She'll look for the out. Scribby. Looking for the out. Looking for the shot. That's yeah. where she wanted it. <laughs> Five dollars for Shannon Scribner. I think she made that two to three ways, too. As we take another look, I think the pin came off the wall and the head pin as well. But now Michael's chance. He was all over the head pin that match, leaving nine pin drops. Going to see if he can carry the extra one here. Buried it. Plowed it. He's been hitting it hard. Michael listed his hidden talent as he can count to eight with his eyes closed. Eyes closed. Looking to cut it. What a try. One of these days we're going to make that. Without the head pin. Well, like I said, you've got it. Oh, yeah, without the head pin. All over it. That's the single pin <laughs> sniping that Michael wanted during the match. But, you know, what he was missing during the match was that awesome, you know, go down on three-point stand form. <laughs> and now Alex Hazard's turn. He's got a career as a lineman if he... Bold, what I am guessing was one of his toughest games of the year, but got carried to the Tournament of Champions where he's going to get a shot to face Josh Sherritts one more time. And Alex clearly saving his bullets for that Tournament of Champions. Josh is shaking his head that hopes he doesn't have to face what he faced last year again. He's homing in. Homing in. He knows that Shannon waited until the third ball to knock them all down. Hoping to duplicate that feat. Hazard has his hidden talent listed as he's still really good looking. Still. He listed it last year, listed again this year. You can see his good looking face and all the others after in the gutter. We could go on and on about the characters our show has, but sometimes it's easier to just show you. Take a look at a few more characters with a trip in the gutter. Uh, you can picture the zombies as a, the pins as a zombie. Do you do that? Is that an approach sometimes. you use once in a while? Try to take them yeah. out. What's your favorite part of sleeping? Just the sleeping parts. They're on the same lane as Shannon. Do you know Shannon? Yeah. 
she cheers for me and I cheer for her. Yeah, it's pretty crazy for me, so I'm just shocked, I guess. Thanks. Are you beating him? Yeah. You are beating him? He's seven and I'm nine, so that kind of gives the advantage. What were you thinking during the break at, at the halfway point? I was just smiling. I wasn't thinking anything. <laughs> Welcome back on Candlepin for Kids. Dan, will start with a runners-up. Thanks, Rob. I don't know how much we can say about that game, huh, Kylie? I mean, how, mu how much better could you really have done in that match? I really think I could have done better. Maybe just get a little more lucky. Sometimes that's all it takes. I mean, I think we counted. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was 8 out of 10 head pin hit, something like that, right? Yeah, that was correct. <laughs> that's why you said you had an 80% chance of hitting the head pin on the high-low jack, but uh, dropped down to 75% after the first ball. Huh? Yeah, my dad kind of lied to me, so it's okay. <laughs> Well, um, how did you feel about having Michael Pelchat moving up in age group? You guys have known each other for a while, right? Yeah, I felt pretty confident considering that he threw the huge 160. So I, uh, I had faith that he could do it again. But he was throwing a great ball. His scores didn't really reflect it as much as it should have. It looked like he put some pressure and some scare into his opponent there. It's the toughest I've ever seen Alex match. You guys had a tight match all the way through. And that's where I think you know some of that good pinning that you had can usually really pay off. I mean, you would have had a 98 game without a mark, right? Yeah, I would have. That's pretty impressive by itself. Mikey. I want to ask you a question about your form that you filled out. I don't know if the camera maybe wants to get it. You've got a little drawing here of me on a date. Maybe we'll cut to it if Rob takes a picture later. You want to talk a little about that picture of you on a date? No, I don't. I've never been on a date. So, <laughs> so this is what you would imagine you would look like if you were on a date. I'll describe to our viewers. I'm particularly impressed with the monocle. I own four. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you going to duplicate this little handlebar mustache? Grow it out. I could see it. I could see you might want to dye it. You do shit every day? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going to have to settle for, um, you know, for being in our Tournament of Champions in one age group. Uh, you really wanted this one, though, right? Very much so. Was there anything you were missing, though, that you didn't have uh, in the match that you had in the tryouts? My spares. That's what it comes down to in this game, right? You still had the nine drops. Congratulations on what you guys did accomplish. Uh, we will be seeing you again, Mike, in the Tournament of Champions. And Kylie, I'm sure we're going to be seeing you again in the team events. Uh, you guys have both bowled really well over the years. Kylie, all consistent. And Mikey, i got to say, your average has improved so much in the last two years, so I know we're going to be seeing you a lot more. In the meantime, Rob's with our champs. I'm praying when we see him a lot more, he brings the monocle with him. Cause I, we do want to see the monocle. Will you promise to bring it next time you come bowling? I will. All right, we're Nesson looking forward to that. Nesson needs a monocle, I think. I'm here with our champions. I've got Alex Hazard and Shannon Scribner here. We'll start with you, Alex. That may have been the most I've seen you struggle before. What was going wrong up there? Um, everything. Literally everything. I was walking to the line too fast, uh, thrown to the right. Uh, everything I ma could imagine go wrong went wrong. You tried to stick with it. Were there any tweaks you were trying to make in the match to try to change things up? Uh, I tried going cross lane about halfway through, and uh, I was hitting the head pin towards the end, but I was punching right through, so it wasn't really helping. Well, we know what you're capable of. We saw it all last year. You're going to get a chance to go back to the Tournament of Champions. What are your expectations for that day now that you can put this one behind you? Um, I expect to throw probably mid-low 100s, hopefully. No, put on another show, me against Josh again. We know you can explode for the big one, and you mentioned it. You'll be facing Josh Eretz in the first round again. What's that matchup bring to the table? Well, I don't know. Me and Josh kind of have like this rivalry going on. I mean, last year I, I threw a strike in the last box, and uh, he wants revenge. He's been talking to me about it all day. So. Well, I think that's going to be an entertaining one for the folks at home, and especially entertaining because of you, Shannon. You had everything going for you today. 516 over four strings that's incredibly impressive what what was it that was going so well um, my first ball was working a lot and I was picking up a lot of tens and so everything was working you threw a 395 in your qualifying score the highest score we've ever seen out of a girl you're having a heck of a year this year yes I am what was going right in the qualifying round um, I was picking a lot picking up a lot of marks and I was hitting the head pin the first ball and this was your third time on our show, first time you've won. Are you feeling, is it any different now than what it was the first two times? Not really. Still just managing the nerves and, and doing well. Your partner was struggling. Did you feel a little extra pressure to try to do a little more in the second half? A little bit, but not much. Well, I think you guys are going to be a very formidable team in the Tournament of Champions, which is going to be exciting for us to watch. They're going home with $50 gift cards. And a trip to Nesson, it's going to be fun to watch. Nesson episodes are really going to be something else, Rob. And as every year unfolds, different stories take place. And the two stories that have come to mind this year have been the dominance of the 11 and under age group in general 
And again, the dominance of the girls in the 15 to 18 age group compared to the boys. Every year is different, but this year seems to be the uh, year for the girls in the older age group. I think a lot of fireworks are going to be saved up for that Tournament of Champions it's episode. Possible. 227 was the high score in this division. Last year was in the high 240s, and I think we can get back to that at Pilgrim Lanes. That's on March 3rd. You should come for the taping to make sure you catch it, and you should watch all of those episodes on Nesson. They're going to be airing in April and May on Saturday mornings at 11.30. You don't want to miss those, and you don't want to miss any of our episodes. They're all on www.cp4k.com. So on behalf of the entire Candlepin for Kids staff, thank you for joining us here at Park Place. They were great for us. Some great food out of the Alley Cat Grill. Thank you for watching. On behalf of Dan Goff here, I'm Rob Taylor. Thanks for watching. <laughs> the international tournament champion and we have a kid who moved up from division two so let's meet all four of them right now right now this guy's gonna be now <laughs> we're watching what goes through my head is i picture my grandfather cheering me on in the background and when i pull bam i pull good uh what are you gonna have to do in the third string to keep this going 170 you have not been bowling for very long, right? How long? Uh, about like three weeks. So, how did you start? Why did you start bowling? Uh, because my mom wanted me to get off the Xbox. 